be prepared. We are now going to give a precise form to the idea that mass or inertia increases with the speed of the body. We shall apply the concepts of special relativity and the conservation of momentum. Let me start by reminding you of that conservation law with the aid of this simple toy. Clearly, all the momentum of one body is transferred to the other on impact. We can repeat it using effectively twice the mass. And the same thing happens. But now, let's use bodies of different masses. We can see that the heavier mass acquires a smaller speed. This becomes more interesting if we set both balls in motion. The momenta of both balls are being reversed on collision, and the heavier ball is clearly moving more slowly, just as demanded by the conservation of momentum. We are now going to combine these two ingredients of momentum conservation and the concepts of special relativity in a kind of space game. A spaceship at rest is designed to fire a projectile broadside. Now two spaceships at rest do the same thing, firing towards each other identical projectiles that move at equal speed. They collide and recoil along the line of fire. Let's concentrate just on the velocity of the projectiles before and after the collision. It's clear that the projectiles carry equal and opposite momenta. The total momentum is zero before the collision. And it is also zero after the collision. Momentum is conserved. No problem here, but that's not a very exciting game. So let's add another ingredient. Suppose we now move rapidly relative to one of the ships, or equivalently, one of the spaceships is moving rapidly relative to us. How do we perceive things? As you remember, lengths along the line of motion are contracted. All right, but how about the act of firing? You will also remember that time significantly slows down. So the act of firing the projectile from its mothership is slowed. As the spacecraft itself is moving, let's look at it again in a way to emphasize the transverse motion of the projectile. Well, so far there's nothing new. We have seen the conservation of momentum and the effects of special relativity. Now we combine them in a new game. Let the two spaceships move relatively to each other. Each of them fires its projectile. Let's look at that end on to concentrate on the transverse motion. Clearly, momentum conservation still holds. How does the same collision look when we move with that spaceship A? That is, when A is at rest relative to us. Obviously, A fires broadside. B, being in rapid motion, exhibits all the time-slowing effects we have discussed. How does the whole incident look?
There's something different there. B fires first. By changing frames, we've lost the simultaneity of firing. That's just what you would expect from our discussion before, but we want to concentrate on something different here. Let's look at it again from the end view. The transverse velocities of the two projectiles are different. Yet this is just another view of the collision where the two velocities were equal, where there is no doubt of momentum conservation. All that has changed is the frame of observation. So momentum should still be conserved. How do we reconcile this? The heavier ball is moving more slowly. There's the answer. Very good. Here, as anticipated, is a mass that grows and grows as the speed approaches the speed of light. And the effect of that is to prevent the speed of light ever being attained by a material body. But that's not the end of the story. The gamma curve used V over C as the horizontal axis. It doesn't look very different if we change that axis to the square of V over C. But suppose we magnify the beginning of the curve for very small values of V over C, where gamma is slowly rising above unity. We get a straight line, and its slope is a half, or in symbols, gamma minus one equals a half V over C squared. So the mass at low speeds is given approximately by this. The combination of a half mv squared is the Newtonian expression for the kinetic energy, the energy of motion. And we see that an increase in energy of a half mv squared produces an increase in mass equal to 1 over c squared times that increase in energy. Or delta E is delta m c squared. Here is the relation usually presented as E equals mc squared that has become the hallmark of Einstein's theory of relativity. That mass in its totality can be converted to energy is a very strong statement indeed. It goes beyond the partial conversion of mass that fuels the sun and nuclear reactors. Well, in what kind of environment can we find direct evidence for it? To look into this uh, interchangeability of energy and mass, we come once again to CERN with its world of high speeds and big accelerators. Now, you remember I said that the superproton synchrotron accelerated the protons to very high energies. What happens to that energy? Well, the particles are fed off from the SPS into a number of different detectors set up to study the way the protons behave. Inside this huge magnet is a detector called a bubble chamber. It's a device for taking pictures of subatomic tracks. This one contains some spectacular secrets of what can happen to a proton. Now, in a bubble chamber, what happens is this. Particles from the accelerator are passed into the tank of liquid hydrogen. As each goes through, it slightly warms up the liquid along its path, and a little while later, tiny bubbles of hydrogen gas form. These bubbles grow to be much larger than the particles 